Praise God. Our notes are found in the Linked Up Church app, and if you don't have that app, you are so late. But our notes are found there on the app. Those of you that are online, of course, the notes are there. If you're looking at us on TV, you know, you version don't have the notes, but you can do, uh, get it on your tablets or on your devices. Otherwise, you can download it on our U version app as well. All right. Praise God. How y'all doing this morning? Praise God. Are you ready to be power up? Did it? Yeah, I said it. Power up did it. <laughs> you know, I want to share a quick story. You know, I love sharing stories and I love sharing statistics. This is not a statistics day. This is a story day. Um, you know, before I got married, I wasn't always Pastor Trish, just in case you didn't know. I have all, I have, I had a life before Pastor Gregory and before Pastor Trish, before Minister Trish, right? Uh, I was a hot mess. And so I, you know, I had, I had boyfriends and my husband would tell you quick, he was never in love. I'm his first love and I am so honored to wear that badge. <laughs> Me on the other hand, like a fool called myself being in love, not once, not twice, four times before I met my husband. I mean, I was in love, too. You, you know, that stupid love. You know, my, my little first love when I was in high school. And then, you know, and then I found out that he was doing something wrong. So then I had, uh, and, and I was bad. You know, it wasn't a term then, but it's a term now. I was terrible, and I ghosted people. I wouldn't break up with them. I just said, okay, I'm done. And just keep moving, right? And so before I even said I'm done, I started dating somebody else. And I was in love with him, too, right? Both of them were there during the, tr the tragic times of my life when I was stupid, not only out the house, but in the house, too. And then he was doing something crazy, right? And then I said, well, forget you, too. And then I started dating somebody else. I was a chronic dater. Any of you can identify? Can you identify online? I was a chronic dater. I, had, I, had, I, I, I was one of those people as a, as a female that just didn't like being by myself. Maybe because I didn't like myself, whatever the case may be. Then I dated this other guy, and, you know, and I called myself being in love. Now, of the four that I called myself being in love with, I was engaged twice. I was. Ring and everything, right? And then my daddy would say, you ain't ready. You just trying to get out the house. <laughs> and then finally, I messed around and met Jesus. And then I started taking Jesus more seriously because I've told you all I've been dipped a few times. And now I'm taking Jesus seriously because I see with all four of these little boyfriends and then even the little, the little side pieces that I had. <laughs> you know those guys that just want to hang out just to be hanging out? Now, you ain't giving them none, but you know. <laughs> they hoping that they can keep hanging out with you until they get some, but you just, you just break it off before anything happens, right? I am being so real right now. You know, they cute, but you know. Anyway, and then I finally say, you know what, God? Because it's the same game, different people. And then finally I said, you know what, God? It's me and you. It's me and you. I was so upset. I was so disgruntled. I was so embittered with the dating scene and guys, especially the guys that I was so in love with, even though I did them just as wrong as they did me, I was done. I said, Father, if I'm to be a nun, then I'll be a nun. Father, it's me and you. I am good. I am good. It's me and you until the day that I say I'm done. And so, it's, that's how it was. And then... Not too long after. I mean, I, I mean, it was sincere. And I know that God sensed the sincerity of my heart. And I meet Joel Gregory a little while later. And, you know, he was different. He was contrary to anything I had ever experienced. He was precise. He was almost, he almost came off a little arrogant. Because he was so certain of what he wanted and what he was about. And then our dating process was like really weird because we, we, we kissed, but then we said, we kissed, but then we said, well, okay, we can't kiss. And so I had never been in a relationship that 
we just, we really enjoyed each other's company. And God was really at the center of it. Now, I wanted God at the center of other relationships, but I didn't know God, so I didn't know how to even recognize him or bring him to those relationships, right? But now I meet this man, a real man, that is that. And then, of course, you all know the story. We don't sleep with each other. We commit to holiness. We commit to godliness. We commit to obedience. And then the day that I graduate from ministry school, because, you know, I said, okay, I said that it's me and God all the way till the end. And so in case you lose your mind and, I, and you do something crazy, park, and I'm going to go down to Tulsa, Oklahoma, and go to ministry school. And, and he did that. Now, I tried to date other people. I really did. Uh, but it didn't work, right? And then my graduation comes. Thousands of people are in this big old auditorium, the Maybe Center in uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma. And we just graduated, I just got my degree, and then this dude gets down on one knee in front of everybody <laughs> with this ring. I knew he was buying my graduation ring for me as a gift, so I'm thinking he about to give me my graduation ring, but that don't require a knee. <laughs> and he says, will you marry me? Now me, what did I do? I was so excited and so surprised, I just ran off. <laughs> I ran to the bathroom, and then I came back. And they were like, well, do you say yes or what? And I was like, yes, yes, yes. Joel Gregory was worth the wait. He was worth the wait. 25 years later, I could still say, he was worth the wait. Even through our struggles, our disappointments, our hurts, our I'm mad at you, you mad at me, he's still worth the wait. We just got through celebrating and honoring the most essential, important, historical event of all times. We celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And for thousands of years, prophets and men of God all throughout history has, saying, has been saying, the Messiah is coming, the Messiah is coming. The Messiah is coming, Isaiah. The Messiah is coming, Jeremiah. The Messiah is coming, Daniel. The Messiah is coming, Ezekiel. The Messiah is coming, Micah. The Messiah is coming. Boom. He's here. The earth is about to give way to the greatest man of all mankind. He was worth the wait. Zechariah's mouth was tied up because he had, didn't have sense enough to speak what the angel spoke. So God bound his mouth saying, you're going to have a son. And when you have that son, you're going to name him John because John's going to usher in the Messiah because the Messiah is coming. And then when that boy John was born and Zechariah's tongue was loosed, he proclaimed the prophecy of God because John was worth the wait. When Elizabeth in her old age had con uh, conceived John in her womb and Mary came by to visit her and when Mary said, hello, Elizabeth, cousin, and that baby leapt in her womb, knowing that John will one day usher in the Messiah. Yes. When she heard John's voice, when that baby heard John's vo uh, Mary's voice and leapt in her womb, Elizabeth was excited and began to prophesy because she knew that Jesus was coming and he was worth the wait. And then Jesus comes. And as, after Jesus was born, three wise men traveled the land following the North Star because they saw in a vision that the Messiah is here. The prophets of old were right. The Messiah is here. And so... They get there where the North Star rested, gave him gifts, proclaiming his glory because Jesus was worth the wait. And then this one I thought was funny because some of you can relate to this. I'm just going to make it real for a, little bit of, for a little bit. Jesus, his first miracle, at the party, they're getting down. Mary knows who she got, but she, she, she knows she has a supernatural child. 
<laughs> and she, she bypasses that he's the son of God because she's like, you my son. <laughs> and the wine runs out, and she's like, Jesus, do what you do. He says, woman, it's not my time yet. She looked at him. You know how mamas give that look? <laughs> we, Mary was still a mother. And so she, boy, just do what I ask you to do. Do something. Do something. And then when the servants stand at, standing in, ma in amazement, and he says, get the, picture, get the barrels, fill them up with water. They're like, what the world? What the world? And then when they start pouring it out, it was wine. Those three servants, how, those servants, how many of you know? They were like, oh, that was worth the wait. <laughs> Amen. And then here we are, three and a half years of Jesus' ministry, supernatural miracles, signs, and wonders, witnesses to his glory and his, his, his deity, as well as his manhood. And he tells them that I'm going to die, and when I die, it's going to be bad. But don't worry, because in three days, I will rise again. They're not understanding what, you're saying, what he's saying. Now, we get it because we're on this side of history. And how many of you know, can imagine that they see Jesus beaten, crowned with a crown of thorns, just horribly abused, and then they nail him on that cross. They pierce his side. He dies after saying, it is done. They hear, it is done. In your mind, you're thinking, if you're really there and you're not on this side of history, my imagination tells me that they're in despair. They're in distress. This dude was to restore the Jews as the rulers of the land. This man was supposed to be our King David. This man was supposed to exalt God's people. What's happening? What's going on? I don't understand. So in th for three days, they're wandering. They're confused. They're frustrated. They're hurt. They're sad. They're mourning. They're grieving. And then on three day, in three days, that early Sunday morning when he rose, how many of you know they were saying, glory to God in the highest, that was worth the wait. Amen. That was worth the wait. And not just that now, understand this. He came back, spent 40, about 40 days on the earth ministering to the people just to say, hey, <laughs> I'm the resurrection, the truth, and the light. Follow me. Let's get it done. And then he says, but I'm not going to leave. I'm go I got to go. I can't stay here. But when I leave, I'm going to send someone in my place. And when I do, he is there to empower you to live life above this standard. See, mind you, they were expecting Jesus to be that King David, to exalt God's people. He just didn't do it the way they wanted him to do it. Right? So let's go to what he says. Our foundation scripture is found in John chapter 14, verses 16 and 17. I'm reading from the Amplified Classic. And it says, I will ask the Father, and he will give you another comforter, counselor, helper, intercessor, advocate, strengthener, and standby that he may remain with you forever. The spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, welcome, or take to its heart, because it does not see him or know and recognize him, but you know and recognize him, for he lives with you constantly and will be in you. A little further down on verse 26, the Amplified Classic says, he's saying it again, emphasizing this numerous times. I'm just capturing John 14, but he says, but the comforter, the counselor, helper, intercessor, advocate, strengthener, stand by the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, in my place to represent me and to act on my behalf. He will teach you all things and he will cause you to recall, remind you of, bring to your remembrance everything I have told you. For some of you that's been churched for a little while, there's a seed of his word within you. 
I don't care if all you know is John 3.16. That's enough power to change lives and your life. So when Jesus says that he left the Holy Spirit, he didn't leave him so that you could live life the way you live life. See, humanity was created by God Almighty. And when he made God, when he made man, he made us in his own image and in his own likeness. Therefore, we have an expectation in our divine state and even in our fallen state that when we say something, we want it to happen. We have this expectation innately within us that if we have high expectations, we expect them to be met. Because when they're not met, then the contrary happens. We are sometimes devastated, disappointed, disarrayed, just like those people were for those three days when Jesus was not there. We have an innate expectation to be, we want to be superior. We want to be successful. We want to be victorious. We want to be more than conquerors. We want to be better. But see, what the enemy did in the fallen state was he corrupted and perverted what God intended for his glory, not above each other, but above the land and the beast and everything, the elements of the earth. But when the enemy came in, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the vanity of life, he corrupted mankind so that not only did we want that, to have that dominion, that superiority, but we wanted it amongst each other. But what God is saying in these days, post-resurrection, is that, yes, I want that for my people. I want that not so that you can lord over other people, but I want that so that those that serve me can be glorified and those that serve the world and the devil can be convicted of sin to come towards me because I want my creation back. Now, I want to introduce you to my best friend. He should be your best friend if you're a Christian. But I am on assignment to make sure to do what I'm anointed to do to make sure that you know who he is. My best friend's name is Holy Spirit, Parakletos. My divine helper, my counselor, my way waker, my standby. That is my best friend. And he is your best friend. Pastor Gregory ministered an excellent series. Jesus is at the right hand, y'all. He's at the right hand. But when he said, lo, I will never leave you nor forsake you, he wasn't talking about him. He was talking about the one who hovers the earth. He was talking about that Holy Spirit, that new my spirit that lives within you and is upon you. And albeit it is important that we understand him and we receive the tangible evidence of him with the Bible evidence of speaking in tongues, speaking in tongues, praying in tongues is not all that he's here to do. I don't want to, don't get me wrong, I don't want to belittle that, but I want to shift your focus to his divinity in your life every single day. Not only when he's dispatched when you are praying in tongues, but every single day. Now, who is Holy Spirit? Now, Proverbs tells us in all our getting, let's get an understanding. So I want you to turn your thinkers on, okay? Number one, Holy Spirit was sent to help us live this Christian life. He was sent to help us live this Christian life. Oh, we are living in some divine times. We are living in times where influence is everywhere, and everybody want to be like everybody else, but still want to be individual. How crazy is that? Right? He helps us to live this Christian life. This Christian life, listen, believers, listen, saints, listen, brothers and sisters. If you are supposed to look like everybody else, then why did he come down here, live, minister, and die and resurrect just so you could live and be like everybody else? He didn't leave his word so you can live life 
like everybody else. In fact, I submit to you that people, life is living them. But God made us dominators. We're to live life. There's a song that I love that says, in the, one of the lyrics, it says, I don't know what the day brings, but I know who brings the day. Right? So he is here to help us live this Christian life. He empowers us to overcome sin. There's no sin that you are into right now that's so heavy that you can't shake it. Not if you're a believer in Christ. He helps us to live a life of holiness. Remember what Pastor Greg was teaching, you can't leave one thing and replace it with something, not replace it with something else. So if you're going to leave lust, you want to replace it with holiness. Holy Spirit is here to empower you to live his kind of life. So he helps us to live a life of holiness. He helps us to be a witness of who he is. And I want to submit something to you. Your witness is not just your testimony. I was a wretch, right? And now I've been, I can see, I, 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 he saved me. I, I'm, I'm blessed, I'm anointed, I'm empowered to prosper, right? Your witness is your bearing of his fruit. Your witness is when someone's going at you and you can still smile. <laughs> your witness is when those kids, you didn't ask them to do something five times and you about to grab something and throw it. Your witness is when you still say, did you not hear me, honey? And you are able to maintain control. Your witness is when that coworker tries to sabotage what you're doing well, just wants to make life hard for you, and you bring them a birthday gift anyway. He is here to help you bear fruit in your lives. Galatians chapter 5, 22 through 23 says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. When we bear the fruit of the Spirit, it's the fruit of Holy Spirit that we bear. Because after our own flesh, we don't want to do it. Romans chapter 7, verses 14 through 17, Paul makes it plain. He says, what I want to do, I don't do. But then what I don't want to do, I end up doing. That's when you're in your own power. When you're in your own flesh, when you're operating according to your own carnality, your own knowledge, your own degrees, your own influence, your own experience, your own hookups. When you are more reliant on that, yes, you are going to default to a carnal behavior. But in the spirit, when you are in the spirit, and when you are conscious of his ever ready presence within you, now you are able to engage in such a way that is contrary to the earth, contrary to the world, where they're baffled, but God is, Holy Spirit is dispatched. And he is obligated to exalt you. He says, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God so that he can exalt you in due season. And we get so caught up on, I don't want them to think that I'm weak. I don't want them to think that I roll like that. I ain't a sucker. I'm not anybody's rug. But see, you can do a little bit to defend yourself, a little bit to avenge yourself. But when you got God on your side, oh, he will not be defeated. He will move you out the way. And he will say, well, you know what, boo, I got you. I got you, right? Number two, the Holy Spirit guides us and he teaches us. He guides us and he teaches us. John 16, verse 13, and the passion, he says, when the truth giving spirit comes, he will unveil the reality of every truth within you. He won't speak his own message, but only what he hears from the Father, and he will reveal prophetically to you what is to come. Now, all too often, we get caught up in praying that this does not happen. Yeah. 
that this does not happen. Since in my saved life, I've been believing God and praying and thanking God for my health, for my wellness, for my whatever healing. My healing could be my stubbed toe, a headache. I got the flu one time. I'm praying, thank you, Father, for healing me from a flu. Right? But then my back started hurting. And if I was to be honest, because I believe I have people that have been here with me, my back started hurting some time, long before I had gotten this diagnosis. And it was on my right side, though. And I'm stretching, I'm taking classes, I'm walking, I'm doing all this stuff that I know to do, and I'm steady praying, Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for healing in my back. I lay hands on my back. And I'm, I'm doing this, right? And then, I, I won't forget it. I'm with a friend of mine, she and I are walking, and we're talking and we're doing what we do for our six miles. And um, I come home and I stretch, and it's something like, almost felt like it popped. It felt weird, but it didn't hurt anymore. Praise God. But then I felt a little anxious. I felt like, um, something's happening. Something's going on. Now, I'm not hurting anymore. I'm, I'm believing that I'm healed. But in my spirit, I'm sensing something's wrong. Something's happening. Something's going on. And I parked it. I rebuked the devil. All this here stuff, right? And I wasn't, and then the anxiety went away, and I had a peace. But yet still, there was this thought in my mind that something's going on in my body. Some, and it went on for almost two years. And... Um, then that day, I couldn't walk anymore. And I go to the doctor. He's telling me one thing, and I'm like, uh. Anyway, long story short, Holy Spirit, I know, was trying to tell me and prepare me for what was to come. And all too often, we're trying to pray against something instead of praying that I hear and see that you guide me and help me. Prepare me for what's to come. You all know the story about Joseph and, um, and, and, and Egypt, right? They were living a good life. Everything was great. And then there's this dream that the king has, and, and he tells him what to do. Now, Joseph could have easily, he's a man of God. He hears from God. We see this, right? He could have prayed that the famine doesn't happen, but instead God said, it's going to come. But here's a plan for you to escape. The storms are going to come. But for the saint, you should never be taken by surprise. He will give you a plan if you engage the one that was worth the wait. We give, this is, this is part B of number three. We give, of number two, we give ourselves too much credit sometimes. Intuition education, experience, somebody else's advice. We give it too much credit sometimes. But you got to know and believe and trust that anything that's good that's happening in your life, it's because God yes. ordained it such. Yes. He made a way for when there seemed to be no way. Romans chapter 12, verse 3 in the Amplified, I love what it says. He says, for by the grace of God given to me, I say to every one of you not to think more highly of himself and his importance and ability than he ought to think, but to think so as to have sound judgment as God has apportioned to, to each a degree of faith and a purpose designed for service. Listen, we've all been dealt the same degree of faith. Romans tells us, we've all been given the same degree of faith. Just because somebody's walking over here doesn't mean that you can't get up to there. But what happens is that we get so used to where we are, our experiences, what God has, what life has done to us, that we rely on that instead of tapping into the unknown because it requires us to let go and not be in control. And we settle for what we can get instead of what God gave us. Amen. It's not because someone had a greater measure of faith. It's only because someone decided to engage. And check this out. Even children of darkness sometimes get it.
Because faith, my husband just said it, faith is a law on the, in the earth. If you sow, you're going to reap. But you can't depend on you. Amen. Sometimes you just got to take that leap. Number three, I'm going to wrap it up here. I got so much more, but I'm going to wrap it up here. He is our intercessor and our advocate. He is our intercessor and our advocate. As our intercessor, that's the Greek word, and this is a long word. Minister David is my uh, et 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 etymologist. Yeah, that's the word, right? Yeah, the one who pronounced, my pronunciator. Hooper Intoncano. Hooper Intoncano is two. He said, I got it. Oh. Thank you, Holy Spirit. It's two words. Hooper means superior, above, beyond. So the first part of that intercessor is superior, above, and beyond. The second part of that word, intonkongo, means to confer with or entreat. So Holy Spirit, as an intercessor, he confers with and entreats to the one who is superior, above, and beyond on our behalf. Romans chapter 6, verse 26 and 20, Romans 8, I'm sorry, 26 and 27 in the Passion says, in a similar way, the Holy Spirit takes hold of us in our human frailty to empower us in our weakness. For example, at times we don't know how to pray or we don't know the best things to ask for, but the Holy Spirit rises up within us to super intercede. Intercede. See, we intercede. But when we engage Holy Spirit, it says here, he super intercedes on our behalf, pleading to God with emotional sighs too deep for words. God, the searcher of the heart, knows fully our longings, yet he also understands the desires of the Spirit because the Holy Spirit passionately pleads before God for us, his holy ones, in perfect harmony with God's plan and our destiny. How many of you wants God's plan? And he just didn't say his plan, but we want God's destiny. How many of you want God's destiny? Hear this clearly. It says here that we, when we engage Holy Spirit, he super intercedes on our behalf. It goes on to say, God, the searcher of the heart, knows fully our longings, yet he also understands the desires of the spirit. Now, when you really study that, those two are almost juxtaposed to one another. He knows our longings, but he also knows the spirit of God's perfect and divine will. So I submit this to you. Sometimes can our longings be contrary to God's perfect will for our lives? Yes. 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 In this fallen state, what we think we want, we ain't ready to have. And so, saints, sometimes when we're praying in our understanding, in our English language or whatever language you might pray in, some might pray in Spanish, some might pray in Korean, some might pray in, I don't know, French, Haitian, yeah, they will do Haitian. Some might pray in their native language, and then they say, okay, I don't know what else to pray. And then those filled with the Holy Spirit, with the Bible, ever and speaking in tongues, starts praying in tongues. <laughs> you don't know this, but when you start praying in tongues, Holy Spirit told me, you're praying our God's divine will. And he says that my will is more important and is the one that's anointed than what you just prayed in English. So what you just prayed in English just might have been voided out. Because I know you. It may lead to destruction. It may lead to hurt. It may lead to pain. You ain't ready to have it. I know you think it's a blessing. I know you think it's divine. I know you might even think that it's my will, but it's really not because when you engage me over here in the spirit, baby, I think way above your thoughts. I'm way above your desires. I have a plan for you, and my plan is to make sure you succeed. My plan is to make sure that you prosper. My plan is to make sure that you are healed. My plan is to make sure that you glorify me in the earth. So when we engage Holy Spirit, he is obligated to God's will in the earth. And I just wonder sometimes for the believer, when we engage Holy Spirit, but yet we're so stuck on what we believe we want, we resist 
what he's trying to do for us. And we stall his divine will for us. I told you I was engaged twice. <laughs> My husband, boy. God wanted to bless me. God wanted to anoint me. God wanted to use the calling that was on my life. I was going to be who I was going to be. But Lord, if I would have attached myself to the wrong one, I would have missed all of you. So, sisters, brothers, saints, beloved ones, engage Holy Spirit. Allow him to be your elevator. Allow him to elevate you to the level to which God, Jesus, died to give you. He didn't die for you, spend three days in hell for you, paying sin's price for you, so that you could live life according to your terms. He's called you to a supernatural life. When he says the fruit of the Spirit, he ends that by saying, against such there is no law. When we bear fruit of Holy Spirit, he says, nature has to bow. He says, rule has to bow. He says, what's common has to bow. Because I've elevated you and you've walked in that elevated state. You're not manifesting anything. Your obedience causes God to manifest what's going on in your life. So leave the crystals, the zodiac signs, the astrology, leave all that mess at home because Holy Spirit is the one who leads you and guides you into all truth. He is your advocate, your intercessor, the one who makes a way for you. Amen? I'll conclude next week. But listen, if you find yourself still longing, still thirsting, still wanting, that's okay. Because we're supposed to still long for, still thirst for, and still want more of God. But when we look for people and things to fill that void, we're common. We're common. We're sublevel. He's giving you Holy Spirit to make your way prosper, to make your way peaceful, to make your way best. Amen. We'll talk more next week about what he does in the earth, and we'll end talking about how we grieve Holy Spirit, how we can blaspheme him. And as I dug into it, I had to repent because I realized that there's been times where I've blasphemed him in my own ignorance. And I see why sometimes in my bad choices, not yesteryear, I'm talking about last week, not because of what I did do, because what, but because of what I failed to do. Because I know he instructed me to do it. And I gave myself too much credit. Uh, I'm not ready for that. That might not be what I need to do right now. Maybe this is not the season, given all types of excuses. And then he just halted me. Girl, I'm calling you to do this, not so that you can do it by yourself, but so that I can be glorified through you. Amen. Who do you think you are? I'm not calling you because of your gifts and talents. I'm calling you because I think you're obedient enough to do it. Are you? Yes. What is God calling you to do? What is Holy Spirit, what has he superinseded on your behalf, but you are resisting it? What is he wanting you to aspire to, but you don't think you're ready? You convinced yourself you're not good enough. You convinced yourself that maybe not me. What is Holy Spirit calling you to, but you've denied him? because of your own abilities. 
He said, I take the foolish things of the earth to confound the wise. And the word wise there is those who think that they and of themselves think that they are able and capable by themselves. If he can take a donkey to prophesy, if he says, if you don't praise him, the rocks will. If he could do something with rocks, birds, and donkeys, don't you think he could do something with you in your I'm not good enough state? Amen. So while every head is bowed and every eye is closed, searching hearts everywhere, Holy Spirit, do your work in the hearts of your people. Provoke them, prod them forward in you, trusting you, walking in the divine grace that's been given to them by faith. But we know that that starts with a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. So perhaps you've been living life on your own and you never really, you, you say, I believe in God. But you've never received Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. Or better yet, maybe you say Jesus is Lord, but you can't identify that. How do you know you're saved in the Word of God? You should know your identification number. So if you've never received Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, I would love to pray with and for you and to assure you of your salvation. Or perhaps you are that person that you're saying, Pastor Trish, you know, I messed up. I messed up bad. I mean, I made some terrible decisions. I've been in jail. Me too. I've had an abortion. Me too. Maybe I've done a horrendous crime. Many of us have. I've stolen. I've lied. I've deceived. I've betrayed. I'm facing prison. God is not bound by where you are. So if you knew Jesus, but you know you made mistakes, you, made, you, made, you know you made decisions contrary to his will, you know you are out of fellowship. Some people call it being backslidden. We simply call it being out of fellowship. Holy Spirit is beckoning you now. He's saying, son, daughter, I love you even in your mess. And the only way you can get cleaned up is by me. If that's you, I would love to pray for you. Or perhaps you have not received Holy Spirit with the Bible evidence of speaking in tongues. It is not spooky. It is not a possession. It is a gift that you receive. And if you want to learn more about that, we have an anointed team that is able to show you exactly from the Word of God where that is, but also to pray you through your receiving it. And finally, perhaps you don't have a church home. You're wandering. You're visiting places. But you believe that you're led here. Pastor Gregory and I will be honored to serve as your pastors. We have a staff that will be honored to serve you. We are here to see you towards victory, the victory that the Lord and Savior of this house has provided for us. That's our assignment. We will pray for you daily. We will teach you the Word of God. I like to believe that we're family. Family has issues, but we love each other through it. So if you would like to make Linked Up Church your church home and you want to learn more about that, I would love to give you that information and pray with and for you. So again, while every head is bowed, every eye is closed, if that's you, if you desire to make Jesus your personal Lord and Savior, or number two, you want to get right with God. You want to get back in fellowship with him. You want to rededicate your life to Jesus. Number three, you want to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the Bible evidence of speaking in tongues. Or four, you want to make Linked Up Church your church home. If that's you, would you please raise your hands high in the air so that I know I'm praying with and for you. Praise God. I see that hand back there. Praise God. I see the hand back there. These hands up here. Praise God. I see several hands. This hand right here. I see about five or six hands going up in the air. And I know there may be more. If that's you, maybe you didn't raise your hand, but you know you should have. I'm going to invite you to take a bold step. In a moment, I'm going to ask the congregation to stand up. 
those of you that did raise your hands and those of you that didn't, but you know you should have. I want you to grab your belongings. Be bold. Be courageous. Be brave. Take a step out into the nearest aisle. I want you to come down here and make a bold march and stand for Jesus Christ right here in front of me so that I can do just what I said. I want to pray with and for you and make sure you get the information that you need. Congregation, would you please stand? And those of you that raise your hands or you know you should have, come on down now in Jesus' name. God did not call you to live in mediocrity. He did not send his only begotten son to die, to be crushed, to rise again after spending three days in hell for you to live in mediocrity, for you to live in sin, for you to live according to your own devices. He has called you to the supernatural, to live above poverty, above confusion, above dismay, above depression, above chaos, above your family history. Hallelujah. Give me some hug. I want some love. God bless you. Hey, sweetheart. Hey, sweetie. Hey, big fella. Praise God. I'm good. Praise God. We're going to take care of one right here, okay? And then we're going to send you someplace because you're going to have questions. You're going to need some clarity. You're going to need some understanding. And that clarity and understanding comes from one place and one place only. Not opinions, but the Word of God. Don't believe the words of a preacher if they can't substantiate it from God's Word. Amen. So if you would, lift up one hand to the great high priest, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and we're all going to join you as a family. Repeat these words after me. Say, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I believe he died for my sins, rose on that third day, and he's at the right hand of God right now. Jesus, come into my heart. I receive you now as my Lord and my Savior. So by the confession of my heart, mouth and the belief in my heart, I declare that Jesus is not only Savior, but he's also Lord, Master, supreme in authority to my life. And I am glad about it. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, I declare over these right now that what you have in your hand, no man shall pluck them out. Continue to show yourself strong on their behalf. Father, those that are here to receive Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, make yourself known to them. Yes, I pray that they receive him today in Jesus' name. But also, Father, I thank you in advance for manifesting yourself in truth and in love and in light to them so that they are secure in who you designed them to be and not what the world is trying to make them out to be. They walk in the superior state that you've called us by your son, Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. If you would, praise God. Come on, let's celebrate. Follow him now in Jesus' name. Online, 
you may have prayed that prayer for the very first time. You've made Jesus your Lord and Savior. You've rededicated your life. Maybe you want the baptism of the Holy Spirit or you want to become a member of Linked Up Church. You can. There's no distance in the Spirit. Just follow the instructions given on the screen that you're looking at. Those of you that are here in the, in the auditorium, in our worship center, maybe you wanted to respond, but you were uncomfortable coming down. I was that person. I held on to the back of that chair, and I snuck into a class. I didn't even answer the altar call. I just said it in my heart and just and snuck into a class, right? Maybe that's you, but we don't want to miss out on being able to minister to you, to answer your questions, to pray with and for you, and to be a support to you. So if you prayed that prayer for the very first time, or, or you want to, maybe you want to rededicate, maybe you want to learn more about the Holy Spirit, or maybe you want to become a member of Linked Up Church, please fill out this Connect card. It's in the seat pocket in front of you. If there's not one there, raise your hand, and someone will give you one. When the offering bucket goes by, put that completed card in that offering bucket, and a minister will follow up with you within the next few days to meet you right where you are because we don't want anybody to miss out on this divine life. Amen? Amen. Amen. Well, I am privileged and honored and pleased to announce that it is now offering time, blessing time, worship time. You can take your seats as we prepare for that. Praise God. If you desire an offering envelope, you can get one in the seat pocket in front of you or our ushers and hostesses will be um, pleased to serve you with one. Or you want to give online. You know, all of you all, all of us, I shouldn't say you all, us, because my husband is notorious for digital giving. If you want to give online via our website, you can do that online. Those of you that are viewing us online, you can do that by following the instructions on the screen. Or you want to text to give, you can text to 678-203-2500 and follow those instructions to do text to give. Or you can, if you're away, mail it. But you're here, for those of you that are here. I'm going to read 2 Corinthians 6 verses, 2 Corinthians 9, I'm sorry, verses 6 through 9 in the Passion. It says here, Paul speaking, here's my point. A stingy sower will reap a meager harvest, but the one who sows from a generous spirit will reap an abundant harvest. Let giving flow from your heart, not from a sense of religious duty, but let it spring up freely from the joy of giving because all God, because God loves hilarious generosity. Yes, God is more than ready to overwhelm you with every form of grace. That's favor, goodness, spiritual blessing. So that you will have more than enough of everything, every moment, and in every way. How many of you want more than enough of everything? Amen. In every moment and in every way. Here's how you access it. He says, he will give you overflow with abundance in every good thing you do. Just as the scriptures say about the one who trusts in him, because he has sown extravagantly and given to the poor, his kindness and generous deeds will never be forgotten. Amen. God is faithful to his word. Listen, we, like I just got through ministering, and if you miss prayer, ooh, prayer was so good. Minister Bernard was talking about being perfected. I'm telling you, if he didn't set me up so good, then praise and worship. I just know Holy Spirit just loves me the most. <laughs> Y'all should be like, no, nah, he loves me the most. Amen. But the way to prosperity, not just money, but in everything, is to be a sower. Contrary to the world. We got to do, to get rich, you got to give. To have favor, you got to give favor. To have forgiveness, you got to give forgiveness, right? It's not tick for tat. Amen. My husband is giving right now online. You know, that's the, he, he, he's, the, he's the money man, so praise the Lord. I don't have to do it. So he's giving right now online, and while he's doing that, let's all raise our devices or our hands in our giving. And let's agree in prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, you give seed to the sower. You cause us to prosper in our way as we are hilarious in our giving to you. We understand the law in the earth is seed, time, and then harvest. So, Father, as we sow this seed, most importantly, we thank you in advance that it goes towards ministering the gospel of Jesus Christ, making known your word, your glory, your son, for the advancement of the kingdom of God. 
Many women, men, boys, and girls will come to know Jesus as their Lord and Savior, living a life full of the Holy Spirit. But part two is also true, and we thank you that you'll cause a harvest to come back into every household that is sowing, and that we are blessed and enriched beyond measure in every way, every moment of our lives. We give you the glory and the honor and the praise for these things being true. Ministering angels, go forth and cause a return to come back on our seats. So now, in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much for watching our online service. We certainly don't take that for granted. And if you enjoyed today's message and you want to get connected with us, we encourage you to become a part of our online community. That's right, and you can do that by subscribing to our YouTube channel, sharing this video with a friend, and following us on social media. Don't forget to meet us right here on this channel every Sunday for our services. If you desire to help us reach more people just like yourself and advance the kingdom of God, then click the Give button now. This will allow us to connect more people to God, their families, their purpose, and their communities. Thank you again for watching our service on today, and we'll, we'll see, see you next week. week.